Hello and welcome to Shred Show. I am your host Chris Crow, and we are live from Studio Shred, aka the Thunderdome of surfing, where surfboards go boom. Pretty weird intro. Big shout outs to the Shred Nation, Ray in Los Angeles, Taylor in Sydney, and Ed Triple X on Twitter. All three of you asked for the Synthetic Sally by Panda Surfboards, complete with melting rainbow or frowning face or smiley face, depending on how you want to look at it. The way that this board came about is Ford Archambold asked Blake Peters, who is the lead shaper at Panda Surfboards, to give him a bunch of alternative shapes. Of all the boards that Blake threw at him, this was Ford's favorite, and he decided to make it his go-to board for surfing around California, Australia, Hawaii, South America, and everywhere else that he travels. If you want to see how this board surfs, we're going to link up a video in the YouTube info below of Ford Archambault surfing this board, so check that out. To many, this kind of a shape looks like something reminiscent of a 90s outline. To many more, this shape looks reminiscent of a board from the 80s. What's interesting is that there are surfers out there that would claim this kind of a shape comes from any generation of the past 35 years. Initially glancing at it, the shape also may look a little bit familiar to the Weirdo Ripper, and it might also look similar to the Proctor Pipsqueak. We'll talk about those relationships more later. We always start with a rub because when you rub a surfboard, the surfboard will start telling you things that it wants to do with you in the ocean. Also, when you give a surfboard a good rub, it's a lot less teasing than just a tickle. If you were touching this board right now with your hands, you would see that this board has a very flat deck throughout the board. Not a lot of convex in the deck. Flat. What that does is it allows us to have a lot of volume coming out to the rails, helps the board sit good up in the water, helps us have easier paddling power, and also lets us go a little bit shorter in the board. That's because of all the foam that it keeps coming out to the rails and all the way up to the nose of the board with a flat deck like this. But if we have a flat deck on a surfboard, we've got to do something to make the board maneuverable from the perspective of rails. If this board continued going flat all the way out to the rails, we would have a lot of volume in these rails and the board would be a little bit hard to dig into a rail and do the kind of turns that we all like doing on surfboards. So what Panda Surfboards has done is they've given us a down rail. Nothing near as extreme of a down rail that we've seen on the Panda Surfboards Doinker, which we did in episode 23. This down rail actually starts pretty close out to the rail. Essentially starts right about here-ish, if you can see that, where it starts to angle down. The Doinker actually had a down rail that started a lot earlier, but that's because that board was a lot wider, and it was thicker, and it had a lot less rocker. It was more flat. Let's have a quick look at the concaves. You can do this in any surf shop that you live close to. If a surf shop is worth the salt water that they profit off of, they'll have a straight edge you can use. Most of them probably have a straight edge a lot more high-tech than this. Something plastic, probably slides really easy. Flat in the nose, single concave, single concave through the first two fins, single concave all the way through the tail of the board, which is really interesting because on a swallowtail, we usually see spiral V's out the back where the stringer comes up a bit higher than the hole of the board. But this swallowtail keeps a single concave throughout. A single concave throughout this board coming out to the swallowtail here in the back will really help you hold through your turns because of the way that the single concave helps you hook your rails and because of the way that the swallowtail gives you a tiny little pintail on each rail so that you can use that for hold into turns or hold for pumping down the face of the wave. When we look at the wing placement on the Synthetic Sally, we can see that the wing is placed just behind the leading two fins and the thruster. As I said before, when people look at the outline of this board, they may find it similar to a Proctor Pipsqueak or a Weirdo Ripper, and those two boards have different wing placements than the Synthetic Sally. Essentially, the way that wings work relative to fins is if you put your fins in front of the wing, that makes the board more drivey. And if you put your wings in front of the fin, that will make the surfboard more loose. So if we're just looking at wing placement like this, the most drivey board would be the Proctor Pipsqueak because it has the fin way in front of the wing. The second most drivey board would be this board because it has the fin in front of the wing, but not quite in front of the wing as much as the Proctor Pipsqueak. And the third most drivey board, the most loose board, would be the Channel Islands Weirdo Ripper because the trailing base of the fin actually meets up with where the wing is. But wing placement is only part of the equation when it comes to a surfboard being loose or drivey. If you remember our episode on the Proctor Pipsqueak, you remember that that board did actually have fins that are most in front of the wing out of all three boards that we're talking about, but it also had these channels right here. Speaking about the Weirdo Ripper, that has the loosest wing placement because the wing is actually right up on the back edge of the fin, but that also has a double concave. This board has a drivey wing placement because the wing is placed behind the back two fins here, but this board has a complete single concave throughout. So there's a lot more than just wings when it comes to determining how drivey or loose a surfboard will feel. If you're not sure what I mean by drivey and loose, Think of drive as wanting to go forward, stability, wanting to do longer arcing turns like this, 
and then think of loose as being more whippy, flicky, and pivoty. All surfboards are a balance between drive and pivot or being loose or being flicky, however you want to describe it. And your preferences for having a drivey or a loose surfboard all just have to do with how you personally feel about the two qualities. Looking at the rocker of this surfboard, we can tell that it's pretty mellow when we look at it. It obviously has got nose and tail rocker, but in the newer versions of this board, they're actually decreasing the nose rocker a bit and adding a bit more width in the nose, which will make this board better for everyday waves that most surfers run into most often. I think this board is a fun choice for anyone from advanced surfers who want to focus a bit more on having fun and a bit less on precision, all the way down to surfers who are just past beginner level and have the hang of long boards and fun boards. As far as waves, I'd say about waist to shoulder high, maybe as low as thigh high or head high in relatively flat faced waves but that have a little bit of punch to be fun, maybe some little crumbly sections that give you the opportunity to hit it. And if you order this board because of the way that they do the down rails and the flat deck, order it about the same thickness as a board that you would surf as long as you are tall, but about four inches shorter. This week we're switching it up in the Shred Show Grip My Shred Stick contest. Get on Instagram and upload a photo of your board with a Dekine pad already on it. At the end of the week, Shred Show intern Dave will be picking one of those boards to send a brand new traction pad to, so that when you get a new stick, you'll be able to track it for free, courtesy of Dekine. So get on Instagram and hashtag your photo grip my shred stick for a chance to win. It's like throwing out cash in a nightclub. Now I want to give a really special shout out to Max and the Bash on YouTube, as well as Dante Arroyo, and everyone else who asked for longboards in the comment section on YouTube for episode 20. I'm not sure if we'll ever get to longboards on this show, but we do want to show you guys some love. In honor of the grip my shred stick, contest, you could win a Dekine Longboard Series calf leash in our new contest, gotta be something cool sounding like Grip My Shred Stick. What we're going to call the Attach My Leg to My Log So That When I Fall My Board Doesn't Float Away contest. Get on Instagram and upload a photo of your longboard and hashtag it Attach My Log to My Leg. At the end of the week, Shred Show's intern Dave will pick one of those photos to send this leash to, so get on Instagram now for your chance to win. That does it for this episode featuring the Synthetic Sally by Panda Surfboards. If you like the video, click like, not the thumb, but the actual button below the video on the left. If you've ever surfed the Synthetic Sally, or the Doinker, or the Black Moon, or the Bangers and Mash, or any boards by Panda Surfboards, please tell us about those experiences in the comments below, and we are psyched to see you next week on Shred Show. May the waves be up wherever you are in the meantime.